Okay, so welcome to this next video in the playlist on uh, inflammation and angiogenesis. In this video, what we're going to talk about is type 1 activation of endothelial cells. Okay, so this is a mechanism which occurs in the inflammatory response. Okay, so let's say that we have some bacterium in our tissue, okay, and we want to mount an inflammatory response to it. So let's say this is our bacterium, and just to give it, a, give a concrete example, let's imagine that it's Staphylococcus aureus that has infected our skin, maybe, okay? So Staphylococcus, uh, its name coccus implies that it's a circular cell, uh, and Staphylo uh, comes from, I think, the Greek for grape, um, which is staphylos, and uh, it's because the way that these bacterial uh, cells grow, i.e. the way that they divide, um, they end up dividing to form a structure that looks like a bunch of grapes. So let me show this. So they'll divide all over the shot and produce something that looks like a bunch of grapes, basically. So that's why uh, they are called staphylococcus, and we'll say it's staphylococcus aureus. Okay, right, which is one of the most famous forms of Staphylococcus. Right, so I'm going to colour these cells in blue, or at least I'll colour one of them in blue, because they gram stain blue, if you do gram stain them. So here's one of these Staphylococcus aureuses covered in, uh, coloured in blue. Now, let's say they have infected our tissue, okay? then what's going to happen is that the body isn't going to like this. Not one bit. These things are very, very dangerous. I mean, these are the cause of toxic shock syndrome. They are a dangerous bacterium. Even though most of us will be covered in them all over our skin, they are not to be underestimated. They are a nasty, nasty infection if they get into your skin. It's okay if they're just sitting on the surface, but if they get into the deeper portions of it, then that's not good. Right. Uh, so, um, what does the body do? Well, it's going to launch what's known as the inflammatory response to try and cope with um, these, this infection of Staphylococcus aureus. Okay, so what I now want to discuss with you is what's often called the five pillars of inflammation. Okay, so I'll put these here, five pillars of inflammation. And four of these were, were um, concocted long, long ago by someone known as Celsus, and don't confuse this with Celsius. Celsius is the guy who uh, has a, uh, a measurement system for temperature named after him. Uh, Celsus came up with four of the pillars of inflammation, okay? So Celsus came up with, and they're in some ancient language, okay? So he came up with dolor, dolor, which is the old word for pain, okay? Rubor, which is the old name for redness, okay, so redness. Calor, which is the old name for heat, calor, okay. So, um, basically, this is about what happens when an area of the body undergoes inflammation. It will become painful, it will become red, it will become hot to the touch. Uh, tumor, it will swell. Okay, swelling, and then finally, those were the four that Celsus came up with, but then one was added later, and the one which was added later was functio lisi. Okay, so functio lisi, and I think this must be Latin, but I've never studied Latin, so I'm not sure. Okay, and this means loss of function. Okay, so just to be pretentious, I've given you the old um, names for it, uh, but these are the modern day words for the five pillars of inflammation. Pain, redness, heat, swelling, and loss of function. Okay, now if we've got an area of our skin which uh, has got this Staphylococcus aureus infection within it, then we're going to launch an inflammatory response against this Staphylococcus aureus. And in this video, I think we should see, certainly we'll see what causes the redness in the inflammatory response. We'll also see what causes the heat and the swelling, okay? 
uh, we won't cause what we won't sorry we won't see what causes the pain we're not going to discuss pain in here and loss of function is more complicated that's obviously to do with pain uh, but we won't see that either okay so we'll start off with these three here and we'll see how these all fit together now so we're going to see the inflammatory response then how does this lead to the initial inflammatory response and type 1 activation of endothelial cells is what's going to happen because in order to uh, bring in things which are going to be able to fight this Staphylococcus aureus infection we need to uh, increase the permeability of the blood vessels because all of the things which are going to be able to fight this Staphylococcus aureus infection they are within the blood okay so we need to bring in the warriors basically we need to bring in the troops okay so basically what's going to happen is that mast cells which are in the peripheral tissue so let's have our mast cell here and it will be a giant compared to our staphylococcus aureus but i i can't draw it too big so it's here so we're going to talk about one way of activating uh, the endothelial cells, which is going to be through histamine, which is why we're discussing mast cells, okay? So, in response to um, the presence of these Staphylococcus aureus bacteria, what's going to happen is our mast cell here, and you have mast cells in all the tissues of your body, they're concentrated in certain places, but you do have them distributed throughout your body, and the key function of mast cells is that they produce histamine, Okay, so this is a mast cell in turquoise here. And basically, it will have uh, vesicles within it. It will be full of vesicles here. So here's our vesicles, and I should draw it in nucleus. So this is its nucleus. But it's also absolutely packed full of these massive great vesicles, and they are big vesicles, okay, uh, which are filled with histamine. So I'll put some histamine in here. Okay, so these have histamine within them. So in pink, this is histamine. So, when this mast cell becomes aware that the Staphylococcus aureus is nearby, so that there's something wrong, it sensed a danger signal, basically. Um, it knows there is something dangerous around here. What it's going to start doing is releasing histamine. Okay, so it's going to start exocytosing these uh, vesicles which are filled with histamine into the interstitial fluid, okay? So here comes the histamine. Okay, and we'll continue this discussion in the next video.